Hello, I'm Steve Nunn, President and CEO of The Open Group. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, where we highlight the various components and leading experts of the Architects Toolkit, a collated portfolio of the most pertinent technology standards for enterprise architects. During the series, I'll be calling on a number of recognized experts who will bring their particular insights on how to most effectively use the various tools in the Architects Toolkit. We'll have a mix of interviews, panel sessions, and pre-recorded presentations along the way. While all standards of the Open Group are designed so they can be adopted independently of one another, the greatest value for an organization can be derived when they're used in unison. The sum of the parts should be greater than the whole. In the Architects Toolkit, we have collated a portfolio of the most pertinent ones for architects together, all in one place. For most of these tools, certification from the Open Group is also available, so practitioners can demonstrate that they have the skills required, and recruiters can take the guesswork out of the recruitment process, all backed up by our Open Badges program. Welcome everyone to Toolkit Tuesday, the uh, second ever Toolkit Tuesday. I hope wherever you are in the world, you are safe and well. My name is Steve Nunn. I'm the president and CEO of the Open Group, and it's my uh, great pleasure to welcome you today. I know you're all uh, busy people, and uh, giving up your time to attend this is, uh, is is a big deal. So we appreciate it, and we hope that you'll get a lot out of it. I'm sure you will. Um, today, we are going to Get a, lot, get a lot of information covered. Uh, we're going to examine how organizations and enterprise architecture practices need to adapt in order to keep delivering value. Through the use of some case study examples, we'll show you how the standards, reference papers, um, uh, tools and techniques in the Open Group Architects Toolkit can be used to fulfill organizational needs in areas such as architecture, IT service management, security, digital transformation, enterprise agility, and business value orientation. So that's a lot, as I say, but to guide us through it, I'm delighted to introduce a colleague of mine, uh, Sonia Gonzalez Paredes, who is the TOGAF Standard Product Manager here at the Open Group. Sonia has 30 years experience as a business and enterprise architecture consultant in different fields and industry verticals. Sonia's professional experience as a project manager includes leading highly effective teams and applying different frameworks, best practices, and tools. So welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, everyone. And uh, in particular, welcome, Sonia. Over to you. Thank you very much, Steve, for this uh, warm welcome. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today to this second episode of our Tuesday Toolkit. Today, I'm going to lead you to this second episode, which is Enterprise Architecture and the Architects Toolkit, Support and Digital Transformation. Through these minutes, we are going to cover these topics, new market trends and challenges, and especially how the new economy and organizations need to adapt to support that and to continue delivering value, especially how Enterprise Architecture needs to adapt to also fulfill those challenges. And looking into the future, how we can apply the Open Group Architects Toolkit to cover all these new trends and, and continue uh, driving our business and digital transformation. And we're going to give a specific examples of how the architect toolkit elements have been used together to provide this value. So starting with the business trends, as you know, uh, the latest years have been challenging for the world. We have experimenting a new way of living, therefore organizations need to adapt. Uh, virtual work and virtual reality are two of the biggest challenges that are forcing organizations to adapt to provide this new way of working to employees. That implies, of course, uh, having sure they have the proper platforms. Data is now more important than ever. Data has always been an asset. Now it's even more important to provide this seamless access to data and also to protect data uh, from attacks on cybersecurity and, and cybersecurity threats that are now also increasing in these times. The power social media and social engagement now the power is in the hands of the customer therefore we need to change our organization to face this new power of the customer and provide them a new customer experience and also the information and virtual reality that we need to address now in this new way of making business also other important areas are the way that we are conducting our business uh, through the value chain is now changed it's not only international 
climate changes and value chains, but also local ones, you know, mostly because of the pandemic, uh, those international uh, value chains are being disrupted, so we need to adapt to more local and global production. Also, they need to get new financial options to fund our business is also increasing. So we have technologies now that crowdfunding and, and also the blockchain technologies. And more important than ever, they need to have a sustainable practice and sustain the environment. And therefore, in the center of all that is they need to change our business model to innovate and provide these solutions using the better use of our resources and facing all these new trends. How about enterprise architecture? You know, there have been studies like this one that you will see here that you will find uh, in the link below, which is how the enterprise architecture practice need to change now uh, to address this new digital era and also post COVID-19. And remote work and remote transaction will continue to be the biggest trends. Therefore, architects are key to provide this landscape of organization and to facilitate the access to cloud technologies in order to really can migrate solutions to the cloud we need to be aware on the whole landscape how to integrate the different solutions also i would say before the need to provide a very customer experience to map this customer journey to the value stream and business capabilities is is quite important the need to have security architecture and cyber security resilience the ability to react faster to the changes is also something that will will be a big trend so therefore enterprise architecture need to be able to provide big landscape and support uh, the high level managers to take decision inform the session the need for agility is also now bigger than ever the need for for ea to support not only agile delivery for software or technology but also to supply enterprise agility as a whole in the center of that we can say that now enterprise architecture needs to move and make a shift and become some, something more cross-cutting more immersed into the company instead of being something top down is something that should be uh, more into the day to day operation working closer with the different areas to help fulfill this need this need to for the organization to react fast and that that, that regard also the enterprise architect, architect need to change their role to face this new age you should maintain the strategic focus of course architects has always been there to support decision taking but now they should innovate more they should be more aware of the need to provide value in a faster way uh, to support innovation to support experimentation to address uh, these new competitors that are more 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 agile and, and more aggressive than it should be before they need to have a governance but following a more dynamic approach is also key and also very important digital transformation is much more than just technology it implies also for the whole organization to be ready to face the new challenges and, and to be ready to adopt new technologies in a way that will really provide value. And beyond all, sustainable EA, the need to have this social, economical, and environmental feasibility is also key. And, and the, the, the fact to present all this big picture. And also very important for practitioners not to forget that the same there to be adapt, which is actually one of the principles of the TOGAP standard. Therefore, the need to which one is our EA maturity it's key there are studies that prove that the more mature the EA capability the more value architects are delivering and also the more uh, rapidly and agile that we able to sustain these changes so therefore being able to understand our own reality is key and paramount for the practice but more about the knowing the trends is how to build on the trends, how we can really, instead of seeing trends like something negative, how we can leverage them. For example, reinventing our business model, the operational model, more sustainable, reliable, faster response. Uh, security and risk are now more important than ever. So the need to have shared trust architecture structure, for example, is key. The need to have this new digital frontier for innovation so now the digital products are the ones that are more uh, trendy so we need to be able to provide and innovate and not only provide digital products but also the digital platform to sustain them the business of technology is now also increasing so it's not anymore about business in it but it's the whole organization that wants and needs to change uh, everything is in the cloud now they need to have this distribution is key the digital products are also sustained for that this global connectivity which is even 
beyond frontiers and is becoming international and regional. Data has always been important, but now they will have artif artificial intelligence and data scientists and machine data is also important to also understand it and profiling our customers. Now the customer is the center of everything, the power of the customer and the need to provide this digital experience and digital reality in a consistent way is also very important. So we need to be able to respond to all these new trends. So in order to do that, we can see something like this, some kind of like a reference architecture and reference models in which up top we, we need to have these trends that we have talked before and we need to how this, this business model transformation is started with the strategy, of course, with being aware of the voice of the customer, the customer is at the center, customer desire, the outside in view is not anymore about what my company wants, but what my customer wants, to be able to define prototypes and product solutions faster and to learn rapidly from them, uh, the ability to provide this digital platform, this digital access, uh, and this business and operational backbone. And of course, all of this need to be sustained by the infrastructure, therefore the importance of providing this digital platform. So things like um, that they Data intelligence that I have mentioned before, sustainability, digital technologies, cloud technology trends, automation, robotics, artificial intelligence are things that need to be immersed in there. But more important than the technology is how we can prepare the organization for this. So organizational structure shift is important and the change management of the organization is also key. And also cross-cutting all that, like we have mentioned before, we can never forget security risk management, which is key, and the need to be protected against cyber crime that can be pretty disruptive. So this is an idea how we can provide this general landscape to build on the trends that we have mentioned before. So what about the enterprise architects toolkit? Are, uh, are saying here is the right tool for the right job. And like Steve said at the beginning, uh, the importance of this toolkit is not only the individual tool, but how they can leverage each other and be more powerful when they are used together. So in this toolkit, we have models and guides, like for example, the open footprint data model, and also the set of models that you will find in the sub of series guys, which is a very rich set of ecosystem surrounding the TOGAF standard in which you will have guidance to fulfill different topics. Open standards and frameworks, of course, like the TOGAF standard, the open process automation and the open agile architecture, which is supporting along with the TOGAF standard, the need for agility. Reference architectures are important to pursue reuse and a more uh, better use of the resources. So we have the IT for IT reference architecture, the healthcare, the commercial aviation, the phase technical standard and the source of reference architecture. All of them are there for you to use. And finally, we also have the bodies of knowledge and tools like the digital practitioner body of knowledge, which is the set of knowledge and practices that uh, you could use to scale your practice and your transformation to address the new digital change. Open fair knowledge is also there and the risk analysis tools that will also fulfill the need to have this security and, and risk analysis tools. And above all that, uh, we know that things like the TOGAP standard is also now supporting new technology trends adoption using all these enterprise toolkit. So we're going to go very briefly over the different bodies of knowledge. Of course, the TOGAF standard, I'm sure more you are very familiar with the TOGAF ADM, which is a trainer of the open group. The TOGAF standard continue being to be a pro proven enterprise architecture methodology supporting enterprise architecture, but it's going beyond that now because now it's changing. It's also evolving like everything that needs to evolve to now support business and not only that, but also business and digital transformation. Therefore, the new vision for the for TOGA standard is not only to hold the general practice that you will find in TOGA 9.2, which is the fundamental content, like the ADM, the tools and techniques, the content framework, but also providing more specific guidance to support specific topics, like for example, different architecture styles, like cloud, agile, uh, support for architecture areas, like more support for technology architecture, data and information architecture, and business architecture, uh, the need for the standard 
to be used along with other frameworks like risk, security, reference models, um, and cloud models, uh, specific verticals, like for example, in banking, in industry, in the government, and of course, the need to have practical application. At the end of the presentation, we are going to show some specific examples of the use of the TOGAF standard and the toolkit in a specific use cases. We also have the Open Agile Architecture, which is was released last year and is going deeper into the Agile space. It has the front of the center, having this value-driven approach and having the customer experience on top, a product value-oriented view, a new operational and business model, and of course, the need to have the proper software and hardware immersed into the view organizational change. By adopting the AEA, the OEA organization will address agile and digital capabilities in a continuous and dynamic way. I invite you to take a look of the standard, which is published in our, in our open group library, and take a look at all these uh, excellent set of practices that are also based on real applications. And you should be asking how, how this relates with the with the TOGAF standard. The two of them are like everything in the toolkit meant to be used together and leverage each other. So we have in one hand the TOGAF standard, which is fulfilling the general practice. And we have the OAA, which is going deeper into the agile space, effective collaboration team, outside in view, product oriented and value oriented, and how to fit an organizational agile change to support digital transformation. And in the middle, in the intersection, we have both of them working to support agile EA delivery and supporting the agile enterprise. So the two standards are meant to inform and leverage each other. And as part of the work that is ongoing right now into the architecture forum and also into the into the board that has delivered the OAA is also work in progress to provide more guidance in this space. How about digital? Okay, as you know, there are different dimensions for the digital space, and this is, you will find a lot of this also in the DP book. Uh, we, we need to provide digitization, which is information in digital form, but also to improve your processes to really come into a digitalization process. And finally, the digital transformation, which is the change across the whole company, which is beyond technology, and also implies a cultural change in the way of working. And so it's important to keep this distinction and you will find a lot of guidance in relation to this also in the DP book. Archimay, like you also know, it's a, is the de facto modeling language for interpreter also meant to be used along with the TOGAP standard. Uh, there's already guidance how to use the two standards together in our library, and there's more coming now. So you will see here how Archimay has been used in several real case applications to provide enterprise architectural models that will support communication with different stakeholders and also to understand the landscape of your organization in a more effective way. The IT for IT reference architect it's meant to provide the business of IT and now it's going deeper because in our snapshot that you will find our library, you will find now they're supporting now the concept of the digital product. So the whole value chain, which is based on, on strategy to portfolio requirement to deploy, request to fulfill and detect to correct is now focused in the digital product, which is the way that it is explored and conceived and defined to innovate all the way how it is deployed and developed following a continuous delivery process, a DevOps approach, how it can be a service to the customer with the proper customer service and support, and then how it can be operational in a continuous detect to correct approach and continuous delivery value. You will find also the snapshot in our library and, and we invite you to also use it and comment in relation with the value of this valuable reference architecture. Zero Trust, like we mentioned, there is also an ongoing project into the security architecture along with the architecture forum uh, to build this Zero Trust architecture, which is also going to be key, especially now that we mentioned at the beginning, the cyber threats and cyber um, security is going more and more important, especially now that we have um, the virtuality has the new way of living. Also, very important is how all these portfolio of standards are meant to be used together for a long-term vision. It's not that the talk of standards should be in the center of, of everything, but this is showing that the different standards are meant to be used together to integrate. For example, the talk of standard is addressing now microservice architecture, this guidance, new guidance coming in that space, the one that I just mentioned, sort of trust architecture. The IT 
IT for IT reference architecture following the digital product is also work in progress to work along with the TUGAF standard. And there are also actually white papers and documents published in our library around that. The Archimate modeling language, the DP book, which is also guidance, how to use the DP book along with the TOGAF standard guidance that will be coming soon. And of course, like I explained before, how the TOGAF standard can be used along with the open other architecture standards. And also between the different standards, there is also a lot of integration and guidance how they can leverage each other. We have seen this before, but now more important is how we can position the different elements, the different standards uh, into this, how, for example, the DP book can support digital transformation, how the OAA can support a new business model, uh, how security can, of course, support security and zero trust and cyber crime, how the TOGAF standard can support the whole landscape, but at the same time provide this new business strategy and way of working. And in order to do that, we are going to provide examples, real cases, some of them provided by our members, some of for partners. You will find some of these examples in our library. Uh, some others are in webinars or in plenaries that we have, um, we also have uh, in, in our library to download. For example, we have a specific example in the steel industry, the EA for manufacturer in Tata Steel. Uh, this is a document that you will find in our library. This is a very good example how the Archimate standard and enterprise architecture have been used to improve the business process for the manufacturing and producing of, of steel uh, in this industry through Europe. Uh, also, we have AVIC, which is in the aircraft manufacturing industry. They have built a whole digital transformation landscape using the TOGA and Archimed standard uh, to provide this new digital offering and use a business architecture and business model, but being sure that they are supported properly by the dig different digital platform. Another in Shell, we had this in one of our plenaries last year, the TOGAF standard to agile development at Shell. This is a very good example how the TOGAF standard and also the Archimate modeling notation can be used along with agile. In this specific example, and we understand how Shell has used an approach to have microservice or micro cycles of the TOGAF ADM to fulfill a digital space, or how the TOGAF standard ADM can be used in an agile pattern. Uh, the other one, it's a, a, it's a work along with the TDC and Theta Consultancy Service. This is also a white paper that you will find in our library. The hybrid enterprise architectural practice for the VI model delivery, which is an adaptation of the TOGAF ADM. You will find in this interesting white paper how these two industries and enterprise work together to provide an agile approach following this balance between having an agile delivery but keeping the, the right governance across the different landscape and having the proper strategy alignment. This is a very interesting white paper as well. Uh, we also have other examples, for example, in Oxo uh, in Mexico, uh, they use the in a, a company uh, called Fensa in the retail industry. They use the ENREA approach and the TOGAF standard to start building their practice and to provide this uh, new architecture for improving their retail operations in Mexico. We also have another very important reference uh, model in the industry space, the industry reference architecture, which is providing a set of building blocks, how to improve the industry as a whole following a digital transformation and for the industry also based in the TOGAF standard reference models. In banking, there are several examples. We have EA and TOGAF in banking in different regions, like for example, in Latin America, in which has been used to support an IT governance framework for the banking. Also, there are examples in the insurance information and data models based on Archimate and TOGAF, they have been used. And as you may know, the buy and the banking industry architecture network, which is fully modeled in using the Archimate modeling notation, a buying industry. Also, you will find several examples in our, in our website, in our library, about how the TOGAF standard can support the implementation of the, of the buy and reference model for banking. And following also the industry pattern, also in, in AVIC, they have also used the TOGAF standard, the Archimate standard, and the IT for IT reflector to provide these tools for a new governance model. So what they have done is they 
this new digital transformation big project through the whole company uh, using the TOGAF ADM as uh, have the general model to support governance and, and the general development process. And they use the IT for IT for the reference architecture following the value chain. And they use the RKMA model to actually deliver in the modeling. So this is a very good example of the three standards used together. So these examples are in the in different industries, but we also have very important examples in, in governments. And uh, for example, this important initiative, the Build and Road Initiative, which is the information exchange regional and international commerce in Asia. This is a V1, and this is actually a model how to improve communication uh, between regional and international commercial interchange. And this is uh, based on a data reference model, a business and data reference model based also use the TOGAF standard and EA. And like I said, it's covering all the region in Asia to facilitate this interchange and commercial. Also, we have other examples like Fujitsu, which has provided use the IT for IT, the TOGAF standard and the, and the IT for IT reference architecture to provide the IT delivery model for the public transportation in the UK. And also they have delivered some service architecture and cloud architectures using both standard, which is again a specific example in the government. Also, uh, you may have heard about that, the NEA, which is uh, a, a big reference architecture project in the India government. They are based on TOGA approach and TOGA reference models, and they are building a huge reference, which is cover the whole India and the different regions in India and their and a specific example of TOGAF application. You will also find several examples in our website. The European Interoperability Reference Architecture is also based on Archimate. It's a set of building blocks. Uh, they are also, you will find our site. And this is supporting um, a interchange of information for e-government in Europe. Also, the Netherlands Tax and Customer Administration, they have used Archimate and the TOGAF standard to provide and deliver a set of models connecting their business and their processes with the underlying technology platforms. We have all that. also another example in Uruguay, the AGESIC, uh, AGESIC uh, agency. They have built a new e-government uh, framework and set of reference models based on the and finally, we have uh, in the UK Ministry of Defence, uh, Ernest and John have work uh, and implemented a series of reference and service models also based on the TOGAF standard. So this is some, some of the examples. So finally, our vision is to keep this ongoing evolution, not only for the TOGAF, we are preparing a new release, uh, trying to address this continuation through guidance and to in these new trends, but also to become the digital first enterprise, which is our our main objective now. So this is mostly, which is our vision. And with that, thank you for your attention. I think we may have some time for some Q&A. And before, beside, before, besides that, you will find a lot of information on our website, the Architects Toolkit, which you will find all these, our in which you'll be able to find all these examples that we have shown today. Back to you now. Steve. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you. That's a lot of material covered in a, in a short time. And for those of you wondering, yes, uh, the fact that you've registered means that you'll get uh, access to this uh, uh, this presentation. In fact, the whole of uh, this episode of Talk It Tuesday, and you'll be notified when it's available. So um, you can uh, rewatch it or um, uh, watch the bits that you missed. So we're very short on uh, on time before the end of the session, Sonia. So I'm going to just limit limit uh, us to one question. Um, you've talked about the value of the, the standards and bodies of knowledge, best practices, et cetera, for business transformation, digital transformation, whatever whatever you might be working on in your organization. Um, but obviously, like any tool, you have to know how to use it um, for it to, be, to really have the value, uh, to realize that value. So it, that means people need to be taught how to use it or they need guidance on how to use it. So is, is that kind of guidance available? 
Actually, yes, uh, we have already available some of these guidance in our library for the different standards. Some of the documents that I mentioned, for example, for the ones for security, how they use the standards together, IT for IT, talk of an argument, we can find that guidance in our website. Also, we have a lot of set of very good guys in the space of business architecture and also information architecture. There are other topics like digital, agile, technology trends, which is guidance that is coming. So, uh, be following, continue following our website because we are planning to release short a, a very good set of guides around these topics as well. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. So, yeah, the the answer for for a lot of this is uh, is go to the Open Group Library, which was the the the, the topic for our first uh, toolkit Tuesday a couple of weeks ago. So, um, we do have to move on. I realise there are some some other questions that people are starting to starting to have. We'll do our best to get those. Uh, answered if you supplied your details to us when you registered, which I think you did. Um, but in the meantime, we do have to move on. We promised people 30 minutes and we have to stick to that. So uh, uh, a, a warm thank you from uh, from everyone, Sonia, for leading us through that. And uh, as I say, there's a lot of information there for people to go through and some useful guidance and links. So uh, do take the time to do that when, uh, when we make that available to you. So meanwhile, thank you very much, Sonia. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Have a good day. Bye. Take care. Hi, everyone. When I first introduced Toolkit Tuesday, one of the things I said we would feature from time to time is a group of experts. And the concept here is that we might call on an expert in a particular area to perhaps expand on the definition of a term or put it in context, perhaps, or perhaps talk about a concept that is the subject of the day, or perhaps just talk in more detail about a particular tool in the toolkit. So today I'd just like to put some faces to names on the initial set of experts that uh, you can expect to see in the coming weeks. And they are Terry Blevins from Enterprise Wise LLC, Chris Frost from Fujitsu, Paul Homan from IBM, and my colleagues at the Open Group, Chris Ford and Andrew Josie. So expect to hear from them in the coming weeks and uh, they will bring their expert opinions to bear and uh, we look forward to them joining Toolkit Tuesday. Let's get back to the show. So folks, um, thank you for uh, joining us today. As I said, uh, we've got some experts. Next time on Toolkit Tuesday, we'll be hearing from one of them, Chris Ford. Um, my, he is going to talk about the future of architects, business innovation and digital transformation. So that's August 31st, two weeks from today. Uh, please join us then for Toolkit Tuesday, episode three, where uh, the majority of the time will be taken up by Chris, but we'll have some uh, some other bits for you as well. So uh, please register. We hope to see you soon. Until then, be safe and well, wherever you are in the world. I'm Steve Nunn. Thank you for joining Toolkit Tuesday. Okay.